Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. Only one verse today and uh, not really a, really a long verse. And uh, I just want to uh, uh, honor God with, uh, with this moment. When we read his word, his word is alive. Amen. His word is, is life changing. Amen. His, his word will reprove you sometimes. Sometimes he'll rebuke you. Sometimes he'll turn you a different direction. And, and often when I, what I have found when I read the word of God is that uh, it's, it's an it's a, a overtime change that happens in my life. Sometimes we can change just like that. But often, you know, those of us that are more stubborn, I mean, I don't know where my wife is. If she was here today, I would really just preach to her only today. But, but sometimes we're so stubborn that we don't really want to change at all. And uh, I mean, come on, if you're strong-willed in life, you don't really want to change. But God wants to change us, amen, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from victory to victory in, in every circumstance of our life. And so let, let's just go, let's just get right into the word. You ready? Proverbs 18, verse 16. I don't know why I'm so excited today. I'm just excited about, about this message. I really am excited. So Proverbs 18, I want you to, if you're at home, I want you to open your Bible and I want you to you know, say it really loud in the house so that the whole house, all the walls of the house will hear your voice today. Amen? Because uh, I, I found out that if you don't uh, read the Word of God in your own home, sometimes there's other words in the home that, need, that, that come in and, and have, have uh, uh, rule in that house. But if it's your house, you need to let God, God be God in your house. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen, Pastor Evan. Okay, Proverbs 18, verse 16. Are you ready? Here we go. Read together on the count of three. One, two, three. Really loud so I can hear you all the way from wherever you're at, okay? <laughs> There's not a lot of us uh, in the room today, but I, I know that I, I just need to know that you're with me. Maybe in the chat, just put down and say, uh, I'm with you, Pastor Everett. I'm, I'm reading with you, Pastor Everett. Uh, I'm excited about the Word of God today, uh, Pastor Everett. I'm grateful today, Pastor Everett. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And so here we go. Ready? Proverbs 18, verse 16. It says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Let's read it again. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Let's just pray for a second. Father, we just ask you to open our heart, our mind, our eyes, our ears, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new. From the word of God today, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Are you ready? Are you ready to be grateful? It's, it's like we can just turn the switch on and be grateful. It's like, it's like sometimes, sometimes that switch don't work right. It's like, you know, if you have a light switch at home and it doesn't work, and you're like, I don't understand why it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't have any power, and uh, that's why it doesn't work. But you know, you know what I found out? Uh, each of us is a gift. Did you know that? So turn, turn to your neighbor right now and just look him straight in the eye and say, and say you are such a gift. <laughs> and turn to your other neighbor, okay? I've been waiting for, I've been waiting since 1986. I think it was like August something, 1986, when I, I preached my first message. I stood before a, a crowd of people and I said, I've been waiting since then to say this. Turn to your other neighbor and say, gift? <laughs> Looks more like a project to me. <laughs> you know, Because the truth is, I think the, tr the truth of the matter is that most of us feel like we're a gift, but to others we look like a project, amen? And I think, I think a God is just like that, amen? He, he likes projects, amen? He, he picked me because I'm a project, amen? And there's a project inside of me that's going on. It's been going on since I was 11 years old. I got saved when I was 11. My goodness, I'd be preaching a lot better if I was just just surrender my life to him if i just let him be i'd be a better i'd be a better man i'd be i'd be more equipped i'd be i'd be happier i'd have more joy i i i wouldn't be so stubborn if if i just if i just was more grateful for what what god has given me see we don't understand that we're a gift we really don't understand that see uh, we started talking about voices okay and about the voices that we listen to in, in the world in our life we're constantly li listening to voices you know, uh, this week, uh, I'll share with you a, a secret. Okay, this week, my, my screen time on my, my cell phone, I, it went down. It's only three hours and 19 minutes or something. 
this week. That's a day, three hours and 19 minutes a day. That's really good because it's down from five hours and 25 minutes two weeks ago. So last week it went to four hours. This week it went to three hours and something. Maybe next week it'll go to two, okay? But I don't know, I might have some extra downtime. But see, what we spend our time on, what voices we allow into our heart, into our life, really begin to give us direction, okay? And we begin to, to believe things, we be, begin to live them out. And then we talked about last week about the blessing, right? How that, that we, are, we are blessed, we, are, we, we walk around uh, blessed. This week, we're gonna talk about the fact that we are a gift, okay? God, he, he didn't just, he, actually the word says, you're a masterpiece, that's what the word says, masterpiece. I, 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 wish, I wish we could get up every morning. I mean, I try to get up every morning and look in the mirror and tell myself I love myself, right? Because not everybody says that to me every day. Most days, people don't even say that to me. They never say, oh, I, I love you. <laughs> it's like, hey, what can you do for me today? And, and so I have to begin to fill my own self up like with some words of affirmation. But the truth of it is, is I'm a masterpiece. God, God made me very specifically. He gave me the personality that I have. He gave me the body type I have. He gave me the, the, the ability to do what I do. He gave that to me. Those are gifts that he gave me for a purpose, amen? Oh, maybe I can make some money. Okay, okay, maybe I can make some money. But, may, but maybe I could do something bigger than myself or for my family. I can take care of my family. I can, I can do all those things, but I don't worship all of those things. I worship the God who created me and, and equipped me to be who I am and to stand before you today, amen? All of you stand before somebody, somewhere, someday, okay? And it's probably today, it's probably every day. And I want you to think about the gift that you are in the moment that you're there, amen? Don't run past the moments forgetting the, that the gift has arrived, amen? The idea, <laughs> this, this idea that, that a gift would make space or make room for itself in the earth is something that... that Sometimes I have struggled against. Matter of fact, I have actually prayed this prayer, uh, this verse back to God. I don't know about you, but I always take the word of God back to God. You know, you ever do that? I always say, here's the word, here's your word, God. This is what you said. You said, you said it, you, you created a gift and that you're going to make space for that gift in the world. The earth, some, this is the way I pray it. I say, earth, line up with the word of God. And I, I command you to make room for the gift of God. And so then we begin to, begin, begin to struggle against what I feel is right, and what God actually created us to be. Amen? Oh. So the idea that our gift will create space in the world in this context is relative to our willingness to surrender to God's will. Maybe I should read it again. But, but how, how, how surrendered are you? See, this is a key, a key to praying this verse back to God. How surrendered are you to God's will in your own life? Is it my will or his will? And see, there's a struggle that goes on with all of us. Uh, last week, we kind of talked about it. I touched on it a little bit. I'm not really going to preach about it too much, but I, I said that this is God's house, right? This is God's house. We, we have a sanctuary, and we call that God's house. I'm going to go to the house of the Lord today. We, we go to church, and then we leave the church building, and, and we forget that this is his house. And so what happens inside of us is it's, it's really relative to my relationship with him. If I allow him to go with me, to circumstances, even just to my car, and just remain saved in your car till you get home, uh, is, is sometimes a great challenge, right? Uh, especially if you're married. God is, and we're here for God's glory, right? We're not here for my, our glory. We're not, you know, I, I, I got a gift, and so, so I'm here to be glorified in my gift. No, I'm here to be glorified for His glory, right? I, I present my body, Paul says in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That's our reasonable service. It's not something that, that's out of line. It's, it's reasonable to present your body a, a, a sacrifice, and it's God's grace. We stand because of God's grace, amen? Amen. It's God's grace that we need. It's God's grace that allows us to even be here to mor this morning. Amen. Because God is good, right? Uh, we're in the presence of the glory of his grace. We talked about it last week. Uh, it, it, so let me just say this. Re sometimes we have to remove some obstructions in our life. Okay. Remove obstructions. And sometimes most of the time it's, it's in our mind. Okay. It's how we perceive things. Because we, we all have 
things that we struggle with, right? Selfishness, we struggle with that. Uh, we, we struggle with pride. We struggle with, uh, you know, our egos and <laughs> our, our ability to fix. You know, the other day I was trying to do something. I was working and I was struggling because I was in a hurry and I was struggling and, and uh, I was tr trying to get this thing off of this thing and, and, uh, and I, I won't explain it to you because it's too complicated. And I was so, my mind was so set on how I was going to do it that I was doing it the hard way. Someone walked up and said, hey, why don't you try this? And I was like, no, I'm gonna do it my own way, is what my first thought was. And then, then I, immediately I go, I'm being stubborn right now. And I said, oh, I'll try that. And I did what they said, not what I thought. And I found myself in that moment understanding some of my problems in life, okay? Some of my own problems are that I, I'm so stubborn that I wanna do it my way, not necessarily God's way, but I want to I want to be a kind of person who does it God's way, right? <laughs> so so let's just let's just practice, okay? I think practice makes perfect. I'm a gift. Say it with me. I'm a gift. I'm a gift. It's a, now, <laughs> turn to your neighbor. You're a gift. <laughs> now it's turn back to the other neighbor. I'm a gift. I'm a gift. And you're you're a gift. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. So, so stop thinking. I know you're thinking. Uh, we, we, just, we just talked about it. We embrace the, pro the project mentality, right? Because we see in others projects, right? But we see inside of us perfection. <laughs> Isn't that true? Isn't it so true? I'm so perfect. <laughs> they wrote a song about that, didn't they? I, I can, I'm going to look at Al because he knows the name of the song. But it's like, I can't wait to get up in the morning. <laughs> I can't wait to look in the mirror because I just get better looking every day. You know, because we see perfection in our own self. We should anyways a little bit, okay? Uh, but we all, all see the project in other people. And so I want to, I want to, can I, can I, can you go with me? And this is kind of long, but I'll try not to make it too long. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. Uh, uh, 7, the number of completion, and 11 is uh, 1 over 10. So, <laughs> 1 Corinthians, I'm just going to read real quick through there, and I, I don't want to, this is not my context, but I'm just wanna, I just want to, I want to take us somewhere uh, so that we can see something uh, that maybe we haven't seen before. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for overflow. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, but the manifestation of the Spirit, big ass Spirit, is given to every man to profit with all. I want, you to, I want you to think about this for a second. The manifestation of the presence of the Lord. So when we feel the presence of God, come on, whenever you feel the presence of God, that is a gift, okay? And that's given to everybody, every single body. Everybody that, that comes into the presence of God and feels that presence of God, that is a great gift. That is a, a powerful miracle that I want, you to, I want you to hold on to that for a second, okay? Hold on to that for a second. Verse 8 says, For to everyone is given by the Spirit. Let me say that again. For to one is given, not everyone, to one. So we have everyone is given, every man gets the manifestation or gets to feel the presence of God. That's given to everybody. And then it says to one is given the Spirit of the Word of Wisdom. I'll not read the rest of it. I'm just going to keep reading the, uh, the, the, the gift. So word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing. So there's multiple gifts of healing, right? Working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues. So these are gifts, okay? There are actually nine listed there, but, but actually, if, I, if you were to highlight... You would, you would see there are, there are nine gifts, but there's actually ten. There's actually ten. So the, the tenth gift is the manifestation of the Spirit. So you're going to feel the presence of God. That's actually a gift God gives you. So there's actually ten. So, there, so when we begin to look at how is God going to uh, manifest a gift in our life, we, we, we often, I've always been taught this. When I was a kid growing up, I was always taught that you should pick one or two gifts, okay, and begin to focus on the one or two gifts and really uh, hone in on and, and, and uh, 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 narrow your expectancy, okay? But, but I want to say this, <laughs> is anything too hard for God? Why should we narrow our expectancy? Should, shouldn't we all have faith for something in our life? Shouldn't we all have faith to, to 
not only just receive salvation, but faith to believe God for something bigger in your life. Faith to believe that, you know what, I don't have a good job right now, but I believe God can bring me a, a better job. Faith that I don't, I don't have enough finances right now, but can't God do something bigger and better with my life? To, it, shouldn't we all have uh, 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 the belief that God can do a miracle? Shouldn't we all, shouldn't we all desire to see those things in our, in, in our life? Not that we're expecting uh, uh, every day that I wake up, maybe, maybe some of us are, so sometimes I, I expect God to, to do things like help me start a car that won't start, help me get a furnace running that doesn't run, uh, help, me, help me to find enough, uh, enough money to uh, feed my family sometimes, uh, help me to, 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 to get through everything. But, but, but it all begins, let me just say it like this, it all begins with the presence of God. You, you, you don't, don't, don't focus on gifts Focus on the presence of God, okay? So, so if I get in the presence of God, amen, gifts will begin to happen. They will begin to manifest because he has already put them in people, amen? So, so, so I don't, I'm not looking for all of this stuff to happen. I'm looking for the presence of God, amen? The gifts will happen when I'm in the presence of God, amen? Say that with me, presence. See, I need to be grateful for the presence of God. I don't, I don't want to hone in and limit God. Amen? I, I found this out that the only, the only thing that limits God is me. Or, or you. You know, or, or it, we, th we think it's them. No, it's not them. When we stand up here and begin to worship, we're not the limiting factor here. You can, you can, I don't care if the devil came himself into this room. He cannot limit what God does as long as we believe that God can still do it. Amen? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let me, let me keep reading. Verse 11. But all these worketh that the one. Say that with me. That the one. All these worketh that the one. Let, let, me, let me just let me give you a verse. Go, go back to 7. It says everyone, right? Everyone. It says given to every man to profit with all. To profit everybody. And then it says, but all these work that the one and the self-same spirit. There is one spirit from God. Amen? There is one Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't worship... I, I think Brother Clay said this the other day. He said, he said it's the Holy Spirit. That's a, it's a separating factor. See, because there's lots of spirits. Amen? But there's only one Holy Spirit. Amen? There's only one, one, one spirit that is set apart from all the other spirits. There's only one spirit that, come in, that wants to come into our heart and mind and life and to change you change you change you dividing to every man so as he will so so the spirit will work as he will amen the, the spirit will work uh, so so don't just just let me let me just say it like this don't focus on the one or two focus on the spirit let him work out the rest of it okay don't don't make a decision that that god see because because i found this out in my life i haven't lived that that long i'm still pretty young but I found this out, that if I begin to focus on this thing only, maybe God is trying to do something over there, okay? And I, I had some people sometimes that came to try to sing that shouldn't be singing, and they think that's their gift. And so then you have to break it to them that it's not your gift to sing, but you can sweep. <laughs> and it's like, I want to sing, but you're a sweeper. I can cook. Ah, you can't cook. <laughs> I had some of your food. <laughs> you know, but you're a greeter. See, see, so we want things in our life, but maybe God is doing a different thing. Amen? Maybe God's project with you is just beginning, okay? And sometimes we're trying to do this when God is trying to do that. Amen? I think most of the time, come on, let's get really, really get honest. Most of the time, we, we're trying to see God do this, and he's really trying to do that. And his plan never looks like my plan. I found that out. His, his way is really not like my way, and his thoughts are really not like my thoughts. And, 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 but I just want to entertain him. I want to, I want to come in to the presence of God. I want to come into the presence. You know, you know, the presence of God, when he arrives in the room, 
it, it causes you to bow down. It really does. It causes you to get low, amen? To get, get down and, and, and to really begin to not, not, not be looking around at everything else and really get to the place where you, you just, you just want to honor Him with your life. You want to honor Him with your, your gift, amen? You want to honor Him with, with all your substance. So it sounds like the first commandment, doesn't it? I love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. First hear, right? First hear the word. Then, then begin to honor Him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your substance, with all that you are. Hmm. So there's actually ten gifts, but I'm going to tell you this. The manifestation is the most important thing. We need Him to manifest in our life. We need Him to come and manifest this morning in, in our circumstances. I, I don't, I don't want to pray a prayer. My, I don't want to lay my hands on someone and pray and, and just, be, just be words. I, I want the presence of God to come. I want Him to come. He, I can say a lot of words, nothing will happen. If the presence of God comes, something will happen. Amen? That's where the power is. The power is in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Okay. It's, it's here in the presence of God that we can see all the gifts come alive. It's, it's also when we can know the roadblock. C come on. It's, it's also when we can know the ro roadblock. Uh, see, see, because, because it, if I won't let God, if I won't let Him move in my own heart, then, then He'll never move in the presence of anybody else. Amen? It's, it's, it's these roadblocks that we have to come, come against this morning. We, we have to come against those. Uh, <laughs> let me just ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> which, which <laughs> this is a loaded question are you ready okay sit back put your feet back okay here you go would you rather see me or know me see because it's, it's two different things and it's the same thing with god would you rather see him show up in the room or would you rather know him amen and see, that's, that's what we have, we have to answer that question. See, so we, most of us are focused on what we can see. But God is focused on, on what we can't see and what others can't see. God, God, God's focus is on what's going on inside of us, not on what others can see. He, he, wants, to, he wants to fix it inside before he shows it off outside. <laughs> Because what God is focused on is hiding inside of your heart. What God is focused on is, is hiding inside of my heart. It's, 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 it, <laughs> that's a revelation right there. It's, it's, it, we, let's not get stuck in the traps of past regret, changing our future focus into disparaging hopelessness, walking in circles like the children of Israel. Walking in circles, walking in circles, walking in circles, doing the same thing over and over, over and over and over. Gratefulness is remembering that I'm a gift from God. That's what, that's what gratefulness is. Gratefulness says, I, I, I thank you, God. I know it's, it's hard right now. I know I don't understand it right now, God, but thank you. Thank you for bringing me to this moment so that I can know that I am not sufficient of my own self, so that I can know that I am not enough. They, thank you, God, for reminding me that I'm your masterpiece. <laughs> thank you, God, for, for reminding me that some assembly is still required. I, I still need some work. Amen? We all need work. Hmm. I, I, I posted this on... on uh, social media last night when the Lord gave it to me, but I said, it's, it's just an idea that, that every time you start thinking about what you can't change, maybe we should stop for a moment and remember what God has put in our hands that we can change. And often the things that we can change are the things we're unwilling to because we like it the way we like it. But God invested in us. God God. God sent His Son, John 3, 16. God sent His Son because He loved you into the world because He loves all of the world, not just me, everyone. The ones that look good, the ones that 
<laughs> don't look good. No, the ones that are smart and the ones that aren't so smart. The ones that, those are our opinions, by the way. God, don't, God doesn't look for your opinion when he sent his son. He, he said, I love you. I love everyone. He loves the whole world. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And he's not looking for our opinion on that love. He's looking for our acceptance of it. God, has, God invested his love in you. He's trusting it in you. He's, he's, he's trusting that, that his love will fulfill his purpose in our own life and then in the life of someone else. I, I, I love this thought because in Genesis chapter 1, it says, in the beginning God created. And we, and we have to really come back to a place where we understand that God did create everything. He created your neighbor. He created your cat. He created your dog. He created, he created the person that, you know, give you the most difficult in, difficulty in your life. He created that person. And, and those circumstances and situations that have been in all of our lives are there, and, and we can't change them, right? And so, so I really think about, about the fact that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and, and, but I love verse 2 because it says, and the earth was without form, void, and full of darkness. Verse 2, it says that. And, and often our life, you know, B.C., before Christ, was, was void, empty, right? Full of darkness, right? And, and, and it was without form. And, and then it says in verse 2, and I highlight this in my Bible, I, I, I think it's a good, it says, and the Spirit of God moved. So before the Spirit of God moved, there was nothing, right? There was nothingness. And often if we feel nothingness in our life, in our, in our, in our whatever it is that you're facing, when we find ourselves there, we need the Spirit of God to move. Because it's then, then, that our creative God will begin to create things in your life. He will begin to turn the light on. Amen? Now, darkness got to go because now I see the truth. The truth, light, light and truth, that's, that's really, we, we want the truth, right? But, but we don't always want the light because if we have the light, then everything gets exposed. That's hiding in light. Matter of fact, it says that men love darkness rather than light because our deeds are evil. We, we come from the position of I like darkness. And God comes from position, I like the light. <laughs> okay? And so I'm going to turn the light on for you. And you're not necessarily going to like, <laughs> he didn't, he's, God don't own Motel 6, and I'll leave the light on for you. He just, he just leaves the light on everywhere he goes. He turns it on. That's what he's, one of the first things he does, turns the light on and, and exposed. Okay? He exposes the, the deficiencies that we are. Not that we it's good that we know that we're deficient, but it's also good to know that our sufficiency is not in ourselves; it's in Him anyways. It's in the Spirit of God. I, I, want, I want to let the Spirit of God, I, 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 I just want to let the Spirit of God move. Maybe we could say that together. I want to let the Spirit of God move in my life. So God, move in my life. God, move in my life but it's going to be uncomfortable. I just want you to know that. It's not going to be comfortable, okay? Because that's what happens. We, we, we have expectation that, that when I come to God, He's my sugar daddy and He's going to fix all my problems just like that. He's going to fix it. He's going to fix it for me. See, because we're working for a cause. I want, I want you to say that with me. I'm working for a cause. The cause that I work for is greater than me. That's, that's such a powerful thing. In 1 Timothy 5, verse 18, and uh, uh, 1, 1 Timothy 5, 18, it says, for the scripture saith, and just, just so you know, this, this actual verse is, is three times in the Bible, Deuteronomy 25, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 9, 9, and then 1 Timothy 5, verse 18. It says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and... The laborer is worthy of his reward. We think that we never get ours, okay, unless we worry about ours. But God is more concerned about an ox that treads out the corn. He's so concerned about this ox that he wrote it in the law. 
he had him write it down in the law. He said, when that ox is, is going around treading out corn, he said, don't put a muzzle on him. Let him eat, okay? And so we worried, you know, this, this verse uh, goes back in my life many, many years. I'll just give you one story where this verse has, has really ministered to me. Uh, I, we were going through a major circumstance in our life, and we hired a consultant, and he came in, and he sat down at the table, and he looked across at me, and he said, he said, uh, Ever, you seem like a really nice guy, but I want you to know that nobody will ever bring you food. That's what he said to me. And, he, and I said, well, you know, that, that sounds good, okay? And I, just because uh, you would never bring me food, <laughs> that's why he said it. But there, there are Christian people that would bring me food, you know? And that was at the beginning of some very difficult times in, my, in our life. And, and there were times, literally, we didn't have any food in the house. And somehow, we always ate. I'm just going to say it like that. We've always ate, okay? And, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm perfect about everything I've ever done in my life, but, but I, I have trusted God. I have trusted Him through the good times and through the bad times, through the times of despair, through the times of, 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 of absolute lack of any understanding. I sat in my office one time for a year crying because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the answer to anything. I, I, I couldn't read the financial. I didn't, I, it did nothing make sense. The smartest people I knew didn't know what to do. I found out that, that smart people are not that smart. Okay? When, when God speaks to us, though, and gives us direction, we can follow Him in faith and find our way through the other end. I ate every day. I ate every day. Every, every single month, God was faithful. God, God was faithful every single time. I, I didn't know how He was going to do it. Actually, I was like, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for about two weeks. And then I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, what's going to happen? And I, said, and I rode this roller coaster. Oh, thank you, Lord, oh, my God, thank you, Lord, oh, my God. Thank you. And, and we do that. We, we do that. I, I don't want to ride roller coasters anymore. I'm, I'm going to trust God. No matter, no matter if I... See, because see, we said it on Tuesday at prayer. If you didn't come to prayer on Tuesday, you missed it. But we said, uh, Hebrews t chapter 10, verse 38 says, now the just shall live by faith. It says it just like that. It doesn't say now, comma, the just shall live, no, by faith. It's all one, one phrase. Now the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. Now the just, so, so if the just are living by faith, actually the Lord gave me verse 35, which says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, for there is great recompense of reward. Because we have reward in the confidence, not in our own self, but in, in the faith that we're following after God in his footsteps. Now the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. We should be living by faith. It sounded like a, a gift that we just read just a minute ago. The, the just shall live by faith. God wrote about the ox in his law. He, he thought about a... a, a a beast that was working. And I, I just want to ask you a question. <laughs> Are you of greater value than an than a, a ox? Is your purpose greater than an ox? Because an ox only does what it's said, what it's told to do. It's just, just keep on walking, keep on treading, keep on doing what you're called to do, keep on, on doing, it, doing it like you should. See, see, <laughs> The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, he's watching over the, the sheep. Amen? See, see, the battle, I think, in our life is for the cause. See, we have a battle of causes in our life because we, we have a cause and God has a cause, but I just want you to lay down your cause and listen to what he says. Follow his cause for once. Follow it and see what happens. Oh, that sounds like a verse 2. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, we have to change our mind. We have to change our mindset. Uh, <laughs> what does it say? It says in uh, Romans uh, chapter 2, uh, it says, That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, see the proof shows up in the process. 
That's what it happens. The proof shows up in the process. I, I, I can't always prove it, but I can show it through the process. Amen? If I, if I begin to walk with him in the process, he'll, the proof will show up. Amen? See, if I take that a little deeper, you know, decisions are, are, are made often from a deep need that we have inside of us. And so, so, so sometimes the deep need is revealed in the circumstance. And, and, in, and, and in that moment, we have a choice to make. We have a choice, and we have to decide. We have to decide, Father, is this really you? Did you bring me to this circumstance, God? What are you trying to do with me now? Well, I just want you to know, God, I don't like it. I, I just don't like it, God. And I, I just, I just I, I'm mad. Yeah, I know you are. It's okay. But I, I've got a project going on. And it looks like Pastor Everett. It looks like Pastor Everett. And, uh, and so, so <laughs> maybe you also just say it out loud. Say God, keep working on Pastor Everett. You got a lot of you got. Uh, I'm glad it's God. <laughs> you know, I'm glad it's him, not not me. I really, I, <laughs> I really feel sorry for Joanne. <laughs> what are you giving your life to? What food are you feeding your soul? It, the word is working. I'm a, uh, I just want to, the word is working. <laughs> the word is working. The word is working. This morning I'm preaching to you a message and the word is working on you. The word is working on me. And that, that word is stirring things up inside of your heart. It's, 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 it's changing you a little bit. And, 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 and God is feeding your soul and your spirit, man, is getting stronger and you're going to be able to walk out of this place or, or tune off of this, this broadcast and you're going to be different. You're going to be changed somewhat today by the, by the power of the word of God. Amen? Which goes forth out of God's mouth and does not return void. It does something to us every time we, we acknowledge it. The Word is working not just for you. This is a secret. Okay? It's for somebody else around you. Amen. See, see, we're supposed to be world changers. We're supposed to walk into the room and bring the kingdom of God there. We're supposed to walk into hospital rooms, put our hands on somebody, and they should be getting healed. There, 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 should, be, there should be somebody that, in your life that needs your, your prayer. You know, you know I found this out? You, 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 when someone needs you to pray, you ever, you ever been in a circumstance where you're just not ready to pray? You're, you're angry. You're, you just got done cussing somebody else, and you get a text. Hey, can you pray for me? Um... Uh, 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 hang on a second. <laughs> Father, forgive me for what I just did. Okay, okay. Now, Father, I, you, know, you, you ever been in that circumstance? See, see, to know... <laughs> let me turn around and look somewhere else. <laughs> but the, what's in you has to be greater than what's around you. And if, and if you always feel like you don't have enough, the truth is, is that we have enough by the Spirit of God. See, that's why it's important to, to have that relationship with that presence of God. I, I want the presence of God. Amen? Amen? I wonder if Moses ever thought he would take his rod and hold it out over and, and make, make waters part. I, I wonder if that miracle would ever cross his mind. I don't think so. I think he just walked with God and God brought him to a circumstance and he said, put your rod out over that there, that there Red Sea. And so he put his rod out over the Red Sea and, and it said, the, it said the, 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 the earth lined up with what God was doing in that moment. It wasn't until he got to that moment that he knew that that was going to even happen. I, I don't think, I don't think, uh, you know, smite that rock, dick, dick, dick. And water gushed out and fed everything. Water from a rock? You know, Moses just listened to what God said and did what he said. That's all it was. That's all it is for you too. That's all it is for me too. It's, it's walking in that presence of God. Walking with him. Okay, let me just tie a bow. I'm, I'm really almost done. I, I promise. Knowing his voice 
makes me understand that I am blessed, brings me to a place that I can be grateful. And, 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 and not just grateful, not just blessed, not just knowing his voice, but indeed. That means, that means there's something indeed flowing out of my life to touch the world around me so that there's a, there's a, there's a transformation of things whenever I show up. Amen? Whenever I show up. Amen? It's not me. It's not you. It's the presence of God in us. Okay? With us. Walking with us. When we show up, things change. Someone once said it may better than me. Uh, I wish I could I'll just borrow it, but we're the thermostat of the room. We, we set the environment in the room. Is it cold or is it hot? See, and it, it doesn't happen like this. It happens over time. I walk with God. I walk with God. I learn from Him. I let Him change me. I, 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 let, it, I let it work in my life. I let, the, I let the Word work in my life. Hmm. What makes the difference in the middle of a storm is this, the same one that brings you through the storm. In the middle of the storm, we have to know that we have to know the one that will take us through the storm. Amen? I need, I need to know that the one that, that, that's with me in the middle is the one that's going to take me through it. I, I have to trust him. I, I, I don't want to be chasing storms all of my life. Storms will come and storms will go, but I'm not going to chase after storms. We, we use, let me change the word, drama. I don't want to be, be full of drama all my life. I, I want to I be the one that, that calms the storm, like Jesus. Jesus brings a calm to the storm. He changes it. See, see I'm, not, I'm not chasing storms. I'm going to go through them. Amen? I'm going to go through them. I'm going to walk right through them. I'm going I'm to come up to whatever obstacle. I'm going to go through it. Amen? I'm going to go over it. I'm going to go under it. I'm going to go around it. God will split it in half. I don't care, but I'm going to go through it. God is going to do something. I believe. I believe. I'm grateful, though. I'm not, I'm not going to run past the best things in life chasing something better only to realize that when I get there, I missed it. It's the rough patches that are the best places. Those are the places that you learn the most. Those are the places that we're confronted with truths that we think we know that really are not truths at all. See, see, that's when we find the lies out in our life. When we get into the middle of some circumstances that we don't understand. That's the best time to grow. That's, that's why right now is a great time for the church. The church of, of the living God is, this is the best time because it's in tribulation and trials that we grow. That's when, that's when real power comes. That's when revival will begin to, to happen. That's when we'll begin to see miracles again because there's, there's, there's trials and tribulations and fire and famine and all of those things. We have to learn to trust God again. We got to learn to hear his voice again. We got to understand that we are blessed. We're blessed with, faith, with faithful Abraham. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm walking around looking for, for something that I don't have. I don't have what I need. I need him. Sometimes we never think about being grateful because we are too busy trying to get what we don't have. When all along, we have the greatest gift of all. We have, we have a relationship with God. We, we, we entertain His presence. That's the best thing. Gratefulness starts when we start to consider what we do have what we do have. I'm grateful for the ability to speak. <laughs> you may not be grateful for it, but I'm grateful for the ability to speak. I'm grateful to have a conversation. To talk. I'm grateful for the ability to listen. Oh, there's some people, if they could just learn to listen, You know what? That's all of us. If we could just learn to listen. It's not those other people. It's us that need to learn to listen. I'm, 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 I'm grateful that I'm able to control my need to control everybody's life. You 
You know, I, I, they're, they're, I, I've been a boss for a long time, okay? And matter of fact, everybody always say, hey boss, a lot of people say that to me. Hey boss, because that's what I've always done since I was, I can't remember, I used to boss my little brother and sister around. <laughs> but, but, but I found this out, that if I tell you what to do, you won't do it. If I show you what to do, you still might not do it, but you're more apt to do it. So what I preach to you today, I preach to you because I am living that. I'm, show, I'm trying to show you. And, and I, I want you to, to, to begin to follow, not just me, because I'm going to make mistakes, but follow that spirit that I'm preaching to you about. Follow him. Listen to him. Talk to him. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for others who will listen to me. You know, last week I said it, but I want to say it again. I'm so thankful for all of you who listen to Pastor Everett, okay? And, and you're like, ah, <laughs> today was hard. <laughs> Maybe last week was hard. Sometimes it's going to be hard to listen to me, but I'm grateful that you listen because I know that God is trying to work in your life. And, 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 I, and I know that he is working in your life, right? In the middle of the mess of all of the world, I, I, th I think about this. There's so many voices that we can listen to in the mess that's going on in the world right now. And I'm so grateful that God has positioned Breakthrough Church to, to be a voice in the mess, okay? To, to be a, a, a voice of truth in the mess, okay? And so I'm grateful that you listen. I'm grateful that you share this message. I'm grateful that you, you turn it on uh, today. Uh, I'm, but, but I'm really grateful for the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful that He lives inside of me. I'm grateful that He lives inside of you. I'm grateful that in the middle of all the storm that's going on, He's still the voice that speaks to us. Hey, uh, uh, for the comfort that He brings, right? The, the, the comfort... Uh, maybe we could just do this. Thank you, Holy Spirit for giving me comfort. <laughs> That's what his name is. He's the comforter, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing me comfort. I, I wonder if you could, you know, kind of take this as your own and go home with it. And when you get into the middle of your room tonight or uh, uh, as you're getting ready to eat lunch and, I know, go through the drive through or wherever it is you're going to do, and, and just say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your comfort. And go like this. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your comfort. I, I just wonder if that wouldn't change some of the anxiety that you feel. Some of the, some of the you know, the, the angst that you have. I'm so grateful for his still, quiet voice that speaks to me in moments just like this. And he says, peace. Peace be still. You know, I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm done. But I, I just want to say this. Last night, I was down in my office, and uh, a few years ago, I don't know, maybe three years ago, two and a half years ago or so, uh, Joanne and I were walking through a store, and, and I, I like words, so I, uh, I, ran, I was walking down the aisle, and I seen this sign, and it says, uh, I, I actually had forgotten about the sign, because I hadn't been in my office in maybe six months downstairs at the home, home office. I, I was, uh, I've always been in other places when I study, and I, I, I was just looking around the room, and uh, I, I, I saw this little sign that I had bought, bought. It says, good things take time. Good things take time. And the truth is, is that you are a good thing. I am a good thing. Better than that, you are a gift. I am a gift. We are gifts to the world. Given by God. Predestined. Right? Set, set up. Everything set up perfect for you to be a gift. I just, I just need you to acknowledge this thing. You know, I've been going through stuff for 25 years. Yeah. 
So is probably everybody else, if they really want to admit it. We all have challenges. But I'm a gift, and you're a gift, and good things take time. And I know that, that time is not of the essence with God. <laughs> this always bothers me about God. God is so egotistical. He stands outside of time, and he doesn't have... He doesn't have the restraint or the pressure of time. I got pressure of time, and I, I'm getting older, and I got this. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to get up in the morning. And I got to go to work. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got. He doesn't have that pressure. Good things take time. Reminds me that I can be patient, and I can know that the earth is going to make room for the gift that we are. And if the earth is going to make room for the gift that we are, shouldn't we make room for the gift? That's my, that's my close. And I want to say this to you as we pray. If you're, wherever you are, if you would stand, I want to pray for you. See, I feel the presence of God right now. And so I say this, I say this to all of you under the sound of my voice right now, wherever you are. I say, Father, maybe you could just put your hand on your heart like this. Put your hand on your belly. That's a better spot. Now we get the Spirit of God moving and stirring inside of you. Father, be the well, not the well. Be the spring that comes forth from us. Lord, that we could be, Lord, help us to have this gift fresh and new turning inside of us again, Father. Father, help us to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit right now. And touch us, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our, our mindsets. Forgive us of our, our false narratives. Forgive us uh, 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 of all the lies that we, just, that we believe, but the ones we live. And help us, Father, to embrace truth. Thank you for being our gift. And Lord, help us to give your gift away to the world around us. And Father, I feel that right. I feel that right now. I feel that tug. And so, Father, I'm asking you, I'm asking you right now to move in people's lives, touch lives all over the world right now. And help us, Lord, to not keep the gift inside, but to give it away. Help us to have courage to live out by faith. Help us to walk with you. Help us to entertain the presence of God in our life. Help us to, to look for that presence every moment, Lord. Quicken our mind, our spirit, our life now, God. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, say it with me. Good things take time. I'm a gift for the earth. I'm a gift for the earth. God made me a gift. He created a gift. <laughs> it looks just like me. So the earth can be changed. Earth gotta move. Here, oh earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Line up today. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you.